It is now my great pleasure to introduce our commencement speaker, Mr. Sean Askinosi. Mr. Askinosi is the founder and chocolate maker of Askinosi Chocolate, a small batch award winning chocolate manufacturer located right here in Springfield, Missouri. Since founding Askinosi Chocolate, Mr. Askinosi's social business model has been featured in O, the Oprah Magazine, where he was named as one of 14 guys who are saving the world. He is a frequent guest on the Fox Business Network and was named Springfield Business Journal's 2008 Entrepreneur of the Year. Mr. Askinosi was also the 2010 and 2011 Mel Carnahan Fellow at Missouri State University's Public Affairs Academy. Please join me in giving Mr. Sean Askinosi a warm welcome to the podium. This is a lot of people. Hickory Hills Junior High Football Practice, 1973. I was terrible. I was lazy. I was always messing around. No hustle and no game time. At one practice, Mark Luzader hit me so hard in the hamburger drill that every single molecule in my body stopped moving for what seemed like five minutes but it was really probably five seconds. My coach was screaming at me while I was on the ground and saying, you'd be better off at home watching Star Trek reruns, wouldn't you? And he thought that was an insult. <laughs> Actually, the answer was yes. So I quit football and stayed home and watched Star Trek reruns. And I want to tell you a little Star Trek story that applies to my talk today. It's about something called the Kobayashi Maru. The Kobayashi, the Kobayashi Maru is a test in the fictional universe of Star Trek. It is a Starfleet training exercise designed to test the character of cadets in the command track of Starfleet Academy. The Japanese phrase, Kobayashi Maru, is used to describe a no-win scenario or a solution that involves redefining the problem. Rescuing the civilian vessel, Kobayashi Maru, is the notional primary goal in a simulated battle with the Klingons. The disabled ship is located in the Klingon neutral zone, and any Starfleet ship entering that zone would be in violation of the Organian Peace Treaty. The approaching cadet crew must decide whether or not to attempt the rescue of the Kobayashi Maru crew, endangering their own ship and lives, or leave the Kobayashi Maru to certain destruction, a classic no-win scenario. The one who solves this problem is Captain Kirk of the Starship Enterprise, and I'll talk more about him in a minute. I'm not an economist. I'm not a politician. I'm not a soothsayer. I'm just a small business owner with my life savings tied up in a little chocolate factory after hanging up 20 years of a criminal law practice to chase a dream and a passion. I have three points today and one challenge, a total of eight minutes, and then I'm going to sit down. Number one, my report to you from the front lines of small business is this. It's not pretty. The economy is not doing so good, if you didn't notice. Um, people are hurting. I travel around the United States selling chocolate from New York to Los Angeles in about 400 stores and from Shanghai to Sweden. You are the first graduating class that entered college at the front edge of the recession. You were innocent, bright-eyed, and ready to learn, ready to plan your career, build your resume, get good grades, secure the right job, the job of your choice get married, have kids, build your portfolio, and retire after, after a long and professionally rewarding career. And then after your first year in school, you were like, wow, I'm really glad I'm in school right now. And then late in your junior year, you were like, hello, I thought this would be over by now. Now we're here, and grad school is looking pretty good about now. This is not what we had planned. 
I don't want you to raise your hands, but how many of you have jobs? How many of you have the job that you hoped you would have today? How many of your parents or aunts and uncles or relatives have either lost their job or had hours cut back? You don't need to raise your hands. Parents, you wanted better for your children. I know I did. Graduates, this mess that we're in is not of your doing. It is not your fault. Your generation faces a no-win scenario, a Kobayashi problem. We are told that in order to solve this economic crisis and create jobs, that we must generate more profit and more profit and more profit so we can consume more and buy more stuff and go into debt. That is no win. Second, the no-win scenario that you and all of us are facing is not the answer. The answer is to redefine the problem and ask a different question. That's what Captain Kirk did. He reprogrammed the computer. He reprogrammed the simulation to ask a different question. I have poured my life savings into this little chocolate company about the time that the recession started. And then bam, not everybody needs an $8 chocolate bar unfortunately. I thought that by now I would not only be in profit territory, but maybe high profit territory. And think about this for a minute. As a chocolate maker, I make 10% of what I made as a lawyer. And I am totally down with that. Why? Because I ask a different question. Not how much profit can I make, not how much money can I make, but we ask at our factory how many lives can we impact, how many people can we touch, and how can we make a difference. Is that measurable? Yes, it is. Is that the standard business question and definition of success? No. But I have used the Kobayashi problem then to redefine the question. Yes, I need to break even in order to pay people who work for me and to pay me and my family, so what we did in the very beginning of the factory is form something called Chocolate University, the day we opened the doors. And from the very beginning, we engaged children in our neighborhood over on Commercial Street, where the Missouri Hotel is located, which if you didn't know is Springfield's largest homeless shelter, where 80 kids spend the night, every night. So we engaged the children of Boyd Elementary. We engaged the children of Pipkin Middle School. Last year, I took 13 high school students with me to Tanzania to meet farmers that they helped me select. And on that trip, one of the central high school students sent a text message back to his mother that said this, this is the best day of my life. Now, is that success? Yes, that is success because I redefined the question. We drilled a deep water well for that village and now 2,000 people have clean water to drink. We started a 100% self-sustaining lunch program at a school in the Philippines that requires no donations and feeds every child in the school. We're doing the same thing in Tanzania, and we're underway to do the same thing at a middle school here in Springfield. We profit share with all of the farmers that we buy cocoa beans from, and we open our books to them so they can understand how we arrived at the profit share. Now remember this, we only have eight full-time employees. This is not some huge operation. I am breaking even as a business owner while doing everything we can to impact lives. And if the question of success is defined by ratio of employee, employees to lives impacted for the good, then we win. For me, the chocolate is a means to an end. Third point, you graduates are at a precipice here right now. You have one big, huge opportunity as you stare over the cliff into the abyss of this nasty, nasty economy that we're in. The greatest generation, people say that all the time, they use that phrase, the greatest generation. They're talking about the people who survived the depression. But the greatest generation to come in the next 100 years is yours. It's not mine, it's not my parents, it's yours. The way out of this no-win scenario is not up to the government. I'm going to say it again, it's not up to the government. It's up to us. It's up to me. It's up to you. It's up to you and you 
and our churches and our temples and our synagogues. We must ask a different question. We must change the standard definitions and change the expectations. And now my challenge to you. I guarantee you that all of you sitting here know at least one person who's having a tough time. You know one person, at least one person, who needs you right now. So my challenge is for you to pick that person and serve one person until they don't need you anymore. It's simple. You don't have to start a nonprofit organization. You don't have to make a big deal of it. You don't have to start a chocolate factory. You can, but you don't have to. It's just one person. The new American dream is exciting. It's bigger than banks that are too big to fail. It's bigger than greed. It's bigger than the Tea Party. It's bigger than Occupy Wall Street or the Arab Spring. It's serving someone that you know who needs you today. And that American dream is defined by you will be serving your way and our way to new expectations. I'm more excited and enthusiastic about the future as I have ever been. And it's because I know that you will meet this challenge. I know it. You will serve others with great satisfaction. And you will know deep down in your soul, job well done, job well done.